Hey, what's up, y'all? So, on the last video, we did a little repainting. We had a spot on the, the fender up here that was messed up from our paint gun, or actually it wasn't even the paint gun, it was just the air hose that dribbled out a little moisture onto the top of the fender. And Anyway, we redid all, we did the whole dang side of the car because we didn't want to have any issues with paint matching. And Some people asked, why didn't I just do the fender by itself? And I was afraid that if I did the fender and didn't do the door, that by the time you hang both panels together, you're gonna see if it's just the slightest shade off. So this way, the whole side of the car matches, so we're good to go. So anyway, we're just hanging panels today for those of you that care to join us. Y'all, some of y'all wanted to see all this stuff, so we're doing it. So when I painted all of this, I just made me a little, what we call a Christmas tree stand in the, uh, in the body shop. And we just hung the doors on both sides of it, man. It came in really handy. Just welded right to the doors in here where no one's gonna see the door panel's gonna cover it later. Not a big deal. We'll grind it off. You'll never know it was ever even there. But man, this little contraption right here, this little homemade thing that we just made out of crap sitting around the yard, you see that's just a rebar. Uh, that thing worked awesome. And we, we made another one for the other set of doors. So we had four doors all together hung up and it worked great, man. trade places with you. It'd be cool if that was already the right height, but I bet it's not. I bet it needs to be a little bit lower. Let's see. Last time I used my floor jack for this, but I lowered this chair so much now that I think I might get away with using it. That'd be kind of cool. This chair is awesome, man, for hanging doors. Uh, it does appear I need to go a little bit lower. Let's see if it'll go low enough. It's got this cool little adjustment down here at the bottom. All I gotta do is crank on this one way or the other. One way it goes up, one way it goes down. So we're getting pretty close. I think I'm gonna run me some tape right here on this edge just as a safety precaution. Because, man, we're sure getting close. I don't like it. So, yeah, let's just put us a little tape. Man, it's so much better than knocking paint off the edge. I'll tell you that much. Tape's pricey. I hate using it for stuff like this. Maybe you just get you an old cheap roll and use it for this kind of stuff. But, uh, anyway, got some on the edge there. Got some over on this edge, too. That way, if we're bumping into each other, we'll be fine. I think we're getting pretty close. Slide this up there. Well, I feel so much better having that that tape on there, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah, you see what I mean? We're bumping into stuff all over the place here. So without the tape, man, whew, we'd be in for a world of hurt. All that work just to go through and bump your bump your uh, paint off the edge is just terrible. I just didn't want to take the chance, and I'm glad I didn't. So I've got one started. All right, man, we're on our way now. Well, I did manage to get one started on the top and one on the bottom. All right, the chair we are done with for now until the next door. I want to swap it out from the floor jack. This way we can kind of fine tune the door. I think we could fine tune it a little better with this since it doesn't have a cushion, you know? So all I'm gonna do is just barely put that underneath there. I'm gonna loosen, loosen one of my hinge bolts. I want to drop this door down just barely because I think I might be up just a little bit too high. We'll 
bring it down just a tiny bit. I'm talking like psh, 16th of an inch. I mean, we're not needing much. There we go. I bet that got it right there. All right, so let's tighten it up. And I'm only tightening one bolt on each hinge for the time being until we get it right. And then we'll tighten them all up. Now, this ought to get us pretty close because what I'm doing is, is down here at the bottom where it meets the rocker panel, I'm just getting a slight little, maybe an eighth inch gap right there so that the two panels aren't rubbing together. And then once I get that established, because we definitely don't want to start to close the door and have it gouging into our rocker panel down here, right? So that's the first thing I want to do is make sure that that's not rubbing together. You can see I put a little tape down there just in case. This is where our, our tape's going to come in handy right now is when we're shutting this. If for some reason these two edges were to rub together, we would, uh, wouldn't have to worry about the tape, the uh, paint rather coming off the edge. So that ought to be okay. Let's come out here now. We're gonna go extremely slow. No latch yet. And there, you can see, man, that is actually a really nice, consistent gap all the way through. I do think I'm slightly high up here. Look, I mean, we're good all through here. I don't know, y'all. That, that's probably as good as that's gonna get because look, we really wanna focus out here mostly. Okay, and that is just dead on and it's consistent all the way down. Up here, it does get a little, a little weird, but it's on the back side of the fin. And dude, that's just how it is with these old cars, man. You can only do so much with them. They're a little off, a little goofy from the factory. And I tell you, that is like a thousand times better than what it came with, believe it or not, brand new. So I'm gonna roll with that. We'll go ahead and tighten up our other bolts. All right, nothing's rubbing. Look, we're gonna look up here. You see how that is a nice, consistent, straight gap all the way through. I can see here I'm in about a mile, but I think what we'll do, we'll bring the, this part, leave the bottom attached, unloosen this one and bring it out just a little bit, because look at this, y'all. That is way off. That's way off right there. So bringing it out is all we're gonna do there. Let's just do it right now. Let's just keep rolling with it, why not? I believe that is gonna be a simple adjustment. Uh, the way you do this is, like I said, leave that bottom one alone, leave it attached, because we don't want the door just floating around. We want it to stay where it's at and just let us make this minor little adjustment up top. Loosen it just a little more maybe. Okay, now we just, I mean, it was just a little bit. So you guys may not even see it on camera because it's so, so minor, but let's see if that did anything for us. Another thing that you can do on a situation like this is if you did get it all the way, you got everything all the way out to where everything is looking good all the way around except for right here. You just come in, believe it or not, and just bend the door frame, the window frame out just a tiny bit. I mean, they move like butter. So uh, what we'll probably do now, I think we're pretty good. I think we're pretty dang good. I'm gonna call that. We're just gonna leave it where it's at for now. Let's go ahead and hang the next panel, get it lined up with this panel. We'll see where we're at and see if we need to move this part out or if we just need to bend this window frame out just a tad bit. We'll see here in just a second. Well, okay, let's start the other side here. Let's see how that chair just slides right under there, man. It's so great. Let's go ahead and get our tape on here just to be on the safe side. Be sure and protect this rocker panel just like we did on that one back there. 
because it will definitely gouge right into this if you set it on you know get get it on here and then it sits down which it's going to want to do on its own it's just the weight of it's going to want to try to sit down on that so we'll go ahead and protect it right here for sure in this little area man i lost the end of my tape where did it, there it is bottom one has to actually slide up into the door yeah right here check that out man you gotta kind of wedge that right up into there you want to be careful not to bump it into anything but there you go all right that's pretty good there Let's see if i get one started up here at the top so bad I would just go ahead and just start off with this floor jack but I really like how the chairs it makes it really easy to roll that door around so go ahead and slide it on out of it. we're done with it there we go uh, this door needs to come down just a bit there we go. Yeah, something like that. A little more. Okay, hang on, hang on. There we go. That's what I'm needing to do. There we go. Now I've got it. All right, we got one on top, one on bottom started. That's what we're needing right there. We'll do the same thing we did on that back door. Just tighten up one, just one middle bolt on these. There's three bolts on the top, three bolts on the bottom, and we'll just do one on each one, just like we, just like we did on that back door. Let's see if we're even in the ballpark. This front one's going, it's, it's tricky once you get to the front door because you're lining up with two panels, you know. So again, want to make sure we're not gouging in down at the bottom or anything. Uh, I think I think we're gonna have to uh, basically bring the jack this way toward this end of the door. Okay, we'll jack it up like that. All right. Now I'm gonna undo that bottom hinge. Remember, we're doing one hinge at a time. That way we kinda stay locked into position and we don't have a door just floating around, right? So, let's jack this up because I think that's what we're needing. Just a little bit and we'll go back and try again. Let's tighten this up down at the bottom, one bolt only. See if this does anything for us. And what that should have done is opened our gap up a little bit because I was noticing we were kind of binding up a little bit. And yeah, that did help, but we need more. So let's just do it again. We will keep doing that till we get it. And the key is just a little bit at a time because if you do too much, you'll just end up opposite of what you're already at. So again, we're gonna loosen that bottom one off. Raise this up maybe just a tiny bit. About like that. Not a lot. Tighten it back up again. One bolt only. Get this out of our way. And we'll go back and try it again. See if we're opening up our gap. It's getting better, a little here, a little there. I'm gonna go ahead and take our tape off so we can see what we're, what we're working with here. Let's 
get that out of the way. Same thing with that one. All right, look, we're not, we're not rubbing anywhere. So that's, that's always good, right? Okay, this is where we're at so far. Uh, I think we can go ahead and get rid of this. Since we've got it on the car, and we're not doing a whole lot of movement, just barely just moving it here and there while it's actually still fastened to the car. We don't really need all the protective tape anymore. And you can see, look, here's our gap running down the door here. Nice and straight and consistent. Uh, I do think I might need to bump the door that way just a tiny bit. Uh, but everything is lining up really good. Uh, I, I seem to be sticking out on the door right there just a tiny amount. So we may try to go in that way on the door just a little bit at the top. But man, we're, we're getting there. Look at that. Stand back and look, y'all. We've got all the panels on the side of the car finally. All the way around, man. All, all that's left is a hood. It'll be nice and easy with this stuff because it's all been painted. We painted everything, man. We painted the latches, the screws, the bolts. It's all painted. So we'll be real easy when we put all this together. We don't want to go knocking all the paint off everything. Something's got me springing out right here, and I was like, what on earth is going on? Because we've already built this thing before when we was in the, the uh, bodywork stage and made sure everything was going to go back together just right and that all of our gaps would line up perfectly. And then now I'm having this issue and it's like, what in the heck is going on? And I was noticing that this door catch is just barely sticking up right here. I mean, just, just barely. And it's actually rubbing the face of the door here. So we'll have to tap that down. I can't believe that's giving me that much problem, but it is. So we'll work that down in there and then uh, the door should shut fine after that. That ought to fix a issue right there. There we go. That's what we're wanting right there. It finally shuts like it's supposed to before. It's like you had to kind of force against it. I'm glad I caught it when I did before we chipped all the paint off because it was rubbing the face of this door inside of here but luckily it didn't chip any of the paint off because we caught it early and we didn't force anything and that's that's part of doing all of this you got to be really slow and careful and you know run tape around edges and just do all of that kind of stuff because it's worth it otherwise if i would have been in here forcing stuff we probably would have bent it chipped it scratched it you name it so uh i think we are we are headed in the right direction on this for sure we've got everything lining up pretty dang good uh, I was thinking about maybe, maybe right here, just taking that in just a little bit. Otherwise, we are ready to run some latches, man. So let's get our latch in the back door. Let's get that going, get it open and shutting with a, a handle and all that good stuff. And uh, once that's completely dialed in exactly the way I want it, which I, I think I'm there. I don't think I need to do anything else to that. We'll finish this up here. I'm pretty good here, but like I said, I, I do want to do a little something right there. So anyway, we're going to get some more of the masking off. Man, how many of you guys use tin foil as some, some pretty good wrapping, man? That stuff works really good for getting around stuff that is kind of hard to, to take around sometimes because it's a, an odd shape, man. This stuff will form right around everything and keep the overspray off. I use it all the time, so. Uh, I want that unwrapped so that I can actually test my latch now that we've got it in. So let's go ahead and shut the door rather lightly. And let's see where that gets. It's, it's a little too far in. I could feel when I rub my hand across here, I could feel the edge of the that quarter panel. So I'm going to want to come out with it a little bit. Let's see. And I actually, believe it or not, want the door to be kind of loose when we shut it. It'll have a little bit of play. Reason being is, is we got brand new weather stripping that's going to go in it. And you want to kind of allow for that. Believe me, it will take all of that slack out once that's in there. Um, this feels really good. And all I did, y'all, was put the latch in and just barely, 
barely tightened it. In fact, I wouldn't even say I tightened it. A trick you can do is pull your latch, right, and hold it, and then slide the door in and out and see if it's rubbing on anything. I mean, that right there, I can barely, I can barely feel it. It's not really offering me any resistance. So maybe we'll hit it up with just a little bit of oil and go ahead and tighten it down and see what happens. It was acting like it was dragging just a little bit, but uh, seems to be okay now. Now what I did was, like I said, was just barely, just barely tighten that screw up just a tiny little bit. That way when we put it in there and shut the door, it'll kind of adjust itself. And then you can go back and tighten it up. That's pretty dang good. I still think, well, you, this is what I'm talking about. You see the slop? That's what we need for the weather stripping. So this actually shuts pretty dang good. I couldn't get it to work with the indoor latch, but now, there we go, now it's working. I do still think maybe I could drop it down a little bit, but I don't know, man. That's actually, I mean, it feels just like it's supposed to. Got your two clicks, that's what you want. And then a little bit of play for the weather strip. I don't know what more you could ask for. So now that I got it where I want it, I'm just gonna go through and snug up all the hinge bolts, top and bottom, all six of them. And then we'll, we'll move on to that front door, get that latch in, make whatever final adjustment we're gonna make on it. I think we're pretty good on it, but I might mess with it just a little bit more. All right, this is the last one. Moving on. Nice. So just like on the back latch, on the striker, all I did was just barely tighten it up to the point to where it stops moving around. You see, that's all I wanna do on this is just get it to where it just kind of stops moving when you're messing with it. Because at first it wants to just go all over the place, right? So now we've got it to the point to where it's, it's in place and it will move if you make it move, but it's not moving on its own. So at this point, what we should be able to do is shut the, uh, the door and have this kind of line itself up. Let me get it just right. There's a sweet spot in there. I'm gonna call that good. And I should be able to shut the door. And just like on the back door, man, just pull the trigger, you know, get the latch, hold it open, and then come through here. And this just, uh, kind of put, in the, put it in its position. See there? It kind of, it just moved right where it needed to be. So now at this point, I'm gonna let the latch loose and we're gonna go for it, see what happens. There we go. That felt really nice. We got our two clicks. There's always two clicks on them. And look, there's our play for the uh, weather stripping, just like we want. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I mean, that's about all there is to it. It's pretty easy. Let's see about getting this gas filler door installed. So nice, freshly painted inside and out. Look at that. Nice, dirty. But all nice and clean, fresh paint. Let's get all this masking off. Get the gas cap out of the way, and this should slide right down on there. See where it just kind of goes right down in here, right over, it slips right over this other two. Just kind of drops down in under the carpet here. And the way they had it before is they just had like a bunch of roofing compound is what it looked like, just globbed over it to seal it to the floor. And we'll have to do something about that when we put it back in. I'm just trying to get everything kind of lined up here so I could Drop that right into the hole, hopefully, is what it's the idea, anyway. 
And we, we got to do it without messing all this up out here. And it all came out as one piece. It all it ought to go back in as one piece, I would think. We just got to get it all lined up, that's all. Let's go ahead and throw some tape on there while we're at it. Just to be on the safe side. I don't like how close that's getting. I'm gonna chip away some more of this tar. See if that'll help us guide this down in there because being a little bit of a bear. Golly, there's a lot of it. A lot more than I thought. I thought I had more than that chipped away, but I guess not. Now would be a good time to pull some of this trim out of here and get it ready for reinstallation because we're just about to that point. Let's go ahead and get some of this out of the way. We don't want to damage it, that's for sure. God, there's just so much of it. It's gonna be good times getting all that back in, I can tell you that much. Probably need a bunch of clips. It's got most of them, but I do remember, especially on the quarter panels, that a lot of those clips didn't. They didn't make it, so. <laughs> quarter panel clips and little things like that, I think is what we're gonna run into the most when it comes time to putting this back together, but shouldn't be too hard. I don't think we got a big community of subscribers that are really helpful when it comes to stuff like that. You guys are very informative on where to get certain things. See stuff like that right there? That's what we're lacking the most. A lot of little stuff like this. This here is the bottom of the front windshield, it says. Don't wanna mess that up. Let's get this one over here. I think this is some of the quarter panel trim here. Yeah, here we go. This is the right side quarter panel. And look at that. We ain't got a single clip on that piece. That's where we're gonna run into trouble the most, I think, is on those quarter panel pieces, because they're so long and like I said, most of the pieces just didn't make it. What is this one? This is the top of the front windshield. So that'll go right on the top of the roof. It's still got the clips on it. All right, good deal there. All right, so we do have everything out of the way finally. <laughs> Let's get this carpet. And you see what we got going on here, man. This tube has to fit inside, a, inside of this hole. There we go, oh, look at that, look at that. It just fell in there like butter once we got everything out of the way. Jumping around over to the outside, this is where things get really tricky. Gonna get this down in there without messing up anything. There it went, God, man, I tell you what, what a pain. Finally, we're in, I'm gonna get the bolts put on it because that is all that holds this in is these four little, these four little screws here, or bolts, and uh, Get those on and get those tightened up. And then it's gonna have a rubber, a rubber grommet piece that goes around that, that holds that, keeps it from flopping around in the hole, right? You don't want that. Man, that's nice having that down in there finally. It was giving us a bit of a struggle, but that's all right, man. I'm glad we put the tape around the edge. Cause look, man, I mean, we did some serious rubbing Getting that in there, that would not have been cool. Messing that edge up all the way around. Not the end of the world. You can fix stuff like that later when it comes down. We got a lot of color sanding and buffing that we're gonna do to this thing. So if we came across a situation where we messed up the edge or something, we could, we could fix it. We could fix it. Not the end of the world, but we, we, we did what we're supposed to do. We put the protective tape around the edge, so we'll be fine back here. No issues at all. All right, so I'll get this tightened up, and I'll check back in with you guys in just a few minutes. We'll see how it all looks once this is all tightened up. I think we're done with all this. We're getting rid of it now. thought maybe we'd clean up the old gas cap before we stick it back on. Why not? OK, 
Okay, this hang a hood, man. This thing is filthy. I tried keeping it covered up with the plastic, but you can see it still gets dirty. So I took my tornado and ran over this area, got all the body shot dust off of it. It was really filthy, and uh, I'm going to take it and run it over the hood too, get it all cleaned up, and then we're going to hang it on here. So back when I tore all of this apart, I took and I taped everything that goes to this area, kind of kept it with this area. Stuff like the little hood stops, that goes over here, screws down into these holes right here. The one for that side is taped over there on the dash, like that. And we've got everything we need. Uh, let's see, in here somewhere ought to be the hood bolts themselves. I think those are right here. Oh, these are some more of the hood stops. These will go in this area somewhere. I gotta remember where they go now. Where do these go? Oh, I see, right here. They, they go in these little slots right here. They need to be replaced though. I kept them just so we know what to order because they're, they're broke off. There's no way they're gonna go back in and stay there. So obviously we gotta get new ones, but we have them so we know exactly what to, uh, what to order, I believe right here will be my hood bolts. Let's see, there they are. There's four for each side on this one. And uh, anyway, this is just a good way to keep track of stuff. I think, I mean, you could throw it in the Ziploc bag and do all of that if you want, however you want to do it, whatever works for you. This is what works for me. I like to keep it in the general vicinity of where it came from and it just makes things a lot easier. A lot, most of this stuff I usually will screw right back in the hole that it came out of. I'm surprised I didn't do that this time. I don't know why I didn't, but anyway, this works just as well, I think. All right, we got that side installed. We'll install this side now. These are real easy. They just screw right down into the holes. And then you can adjust them up and down when we want to, you know, do the, do the uh, gaps and, you know, the level of the hood and all of that. We'll get to all that in a little bit, but for now, let's get all this tightened up. Yeah, so anytime you're trying to hang panels by yourself, man, just double up on all the rags and all that. Have everything ready, dude. Have all your bolts ready, have your ratchets ready, have them spinning the right way, everything. Get all of this in place. This is really important, obviously, before you go laying a panel on there, especially if you're doing it by yourself. Let's see, we'll probably drop it in right here. Just get your corner in there. There we go, like that. I know that looks sketchy, but it'll work. Gotta be really careful. There we go, yeah. <laughs> Gonna have a good camera person to kind of help you out. <laughs> there we go, there's my hood prop. That ought to be good. Well, that's it, we're in place, now we can start running bolts. So it is worth mentioning when you're doing this, is take your hood springs out. It's gonna help you a lot. So we'll get a bolt started here, probably about, probably that one there, looks like it's gonna go. There we go, that's pretty easy. We'll jump over to the other side, get one started over there. See how having those springs out makes this actually possible. The springs are in it. Obviously the hood springs would be stuck in this position right here. And that would be a little harder to do because then you gotta try to set your hood down in there, you know, at this weird angle where you're setting it down in there, sliding it down. I don't know, man. I don't think I could get it up high enough over there to make that happen. So I take the springs out and that makes it where I don't have to quite lift it up so high and it makes it to where I could start at one corner kind of get that started and swing it on around with ease right I mean you see that didn't look too bad and the best part is no scratches look at that no chips no scratches let's get an idea if we're even in the ballpark uh, we should probably wrap the edges with some tape like we've been doing on the doors, but 
I'm just gonna go really, really, really slow. I can see already that we're a little tight down in the corner down there. Okay. And a little wide over here. So before we even go any further, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and raise it back up. Throw in my redneck hood prop here. How you like that? Well, that thing's getting the job done. All right, and just like before, you know, what I've done, we got four bolts on each side like we had mentioned. I've only tightened two in kind of a diagonally pattern and they're not tight. I mean, they're just barely snug and I've done that on both sides. I mean, they're not even snug. They're just making contact really is all they're doing. And now what I'm gonna do is I could just barely, just barely make my, a little bit of a sideways adjustment there. <laughs> that's probably all it's gonna take. We should be able to drop it down and have a pretty decent gap on both sides, pretty equal, unless I went too far. The best part is no contact, nothing's touching anything. That's, that's a big deal, y'all. Okay. I think we got a pretty good starting point. Something else you wanna do is watch across the back side and make sure that you're not touching there and it looks like we're actually too big i think we need to slide the hood backwards just a little bit that gap is huge so we'll just keep working at it i mean that's all you're going to do just just like with all the other panels now that we've got it up here and we've got it really close to where it needs to be we're just fine-tuning everything and it's it's just a matter of patience by sliding the hood down, we're closing this gap, and that's exactly what we need, because it was excessive. I'd say probably every bit of that right there. And just like before, just barely, I want y'all to see just how lightly I'm tightening this. I wouldn't even consider it tightening. I mean, we're just to the point to where, I mean, look at this, I'm barely pinching the the ratchet together. I mean, that that's it, that's all I want. I'll come over here and I'll do another one up down here the same way. You see that, look at that. That's it, that's all I want. That way I can still kind of move it around. If I need to go that way, I, I'll be able to push it that way. We're not locked into position. This side, we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna drop it down, close that gap up. This car is so easy to work on. And if you missed the videos where we did all the body work, man, we, we totally built this car before we ever took it back apart to do all of the uh, paint work. We built the car, we got all of the gaps dialed in. It was really nice, the gaps. So I know without a doubt that this car is gonna go back together the way we want it to because we've already done it once. So anyway, that's where all that prep work comes in. Cause all that prep work, man, I mean, it just makes all the difference in the world. So. I guess that's all it's gonna give me right there. So just like the other side, just barely gonna just give it that little number there, that's it. We'll do it on the back here, same way, and we will shut it down and see what it looks like. And we'll do this probably half a dozen times before we get it where we want, but that's just how it is. We didn't go through all this trouble of straightening this car out just to put it together and have a bunch of crappy gaps everywhere. That's just not cool, right? You can see there we've already dropped down into our latch, so I think we are doing good. I'm looking over here, I don't see anything touching. I do see some final little tweaking that I think we could probably do, maybe tighten this gap up a little bit and loosen this one up just a little bit. But look at this, y'all. <laughs> just like that, just like that, man. That shit's like brand new, so we're close. We are very, very close. In fact, you could probably just about leave that alone. Look at this, y'all. That gap we just, that's what we was working on just now. Look at that, we got that looking nice all the way across. Awesome deal, man. Uh, yeah, like I said, all that prep work that we did, we got playlists. If you guys missed it, go watch and you'll see. It does take some effort, you know, ahead of time. You gotta build the car twice. Man, you'll love it when it comes time to put it back together because it'll just, it'll literally kind of just fall back together.
Okay, so obviously once you get everything done, go through, tighten everything down. This is where we can start snugging everything up. Well, look at that, man. All the panels are finally on this car. And <laughs> she's looking sharp, too. Really looking sharp, man. I'm loving it. So, I know some of you guys want to see trim go on. That's cool. I'm, I'm ready, too. But, I want to take care of something first. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys already noticed it earlier. And we do have some paint runs. Hey, man. It happens. Uh, in the paint shop, we would joke around with, about stuff like that and say that, you know, anytime you get a run or a drip or any of that kind of stuff, it's just, that's a painter's signature, y'all. So I'm no exception. I left my signature all over this one, <laughs> especially down at the bottom of the doors. You guys seen the little drips down there. Listen, y'all, that is not a big deal. Don't even worry about that at all. We can color sand those off, and that's exactly what we're going to do right now. This is just an old spray bottle full of soapy water. That's all it is. This is a piece of sandpaper. This is thousand grit. That's what I'm gonna use on this. And I've got a little piece of one of my stirring sticks, you know, little paint sticks that we stir the paint with. And I'm just gonna wrap that over there. And I got enough there that I could kind of pinch it together. You see that? So anyway, I'll just run it through here. We wanna get our soapy water on there. I'm gonna hose all of this down real good. And you wanna be really careful on your edges. Okay, that's important because you will burn right through an edge in no time flat. That's why we're using thousand grit because we don't want to use anything super aggressive. It'll cut right through it too fast and then you'll really be in trouble. Uh, uh, obviously, we got plenty of material on here. <laughs> thanks, to, thanks to yours truly. Uh, this was just me trying too hard. That's all it was. I was just trying to make sure there was enough on there and boy did we. So anyway, you're just gonna come through there and you'll you'll keep sanding until it goes away. You wanna check it every once in a while. Just kinda round that over the edge there. And we ought to be okay. I don't think we'll have any trouble burning through it or anything. And the best part is, is when we're done, all I gotta do is take my buffer, right? A little bit of compound polish, zip right back over it and you'll never ever know it was there. So if this happens to you while you're painting, don't worry about it, man. It is not a big deal. Don't freak out. Just take your time and go back through and straighten it out. You'll be okay. I promise you, you'll be just fine. See how that's going away? I mean, I just showed you that in real time, just how fast that will melt away. You can see there, you could barely even see it at this point. We'll work it just a little bit more. And I promise, man, that will go away. And this sandpaper, if you're new to this, you're gonna swear that this is too smooth, that it's not gonna do anything. But when, man, when it comes to paint, that's the way it is. That's the name of the game. All of your sandpapers, by the time you get to this point, are super duper fine and you'll swear that they're not even sandpaper at all <laughs> so hey man there's your sunday video i appreciate everybody watching uh some of y'all were interested in seeing the car go back together i know we got a lot of new subs that may have not have seen before when we you know hanging panels and things like that so i thought i'd go ahead and throw another video out why not we're already out here doing the work some of you want to see it might as well throw a video out for you guys so there you have it all the panels on the car all the gaps looking good uh We'll get, we'll finish up some color sanding and buffing. We'll show more of that in, in upcoming videos. And the trim, dude, that's like a whole video by itself, getting this trim back on, figuring out what we're gonna do with all these clips and how we're gonna go about sourcing those and all of that. So anyway, lots of fun left ahead on the old girl. Uh, don't worry, the other projects, we'll still be working on those. We'll, 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 we'll just kind of work them in. We'll, we'll be all over the place, all kinds of projects going on. So anyway, please like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. I do appreciate everybody watching. I'm going to get on out of here. Don't forget my Instagram and my Facebook. Link in the descriptions, and you'll always get a notification from me every time I put a video out. So anyway, I'll see you all next time.